Quick. Yeah, melanoma we're talking about. Uh, melanoma skin cancer rates in the UK have risen by 119% since the early 90s. It's now the fifth most common cancer in the country. So we all want to stay safe in the sun, but the advice often changes, doesn't it, Alice? It does. And there's a new report out now. There is, which the consumer group has done its annual test of sun creams, where it tests the SPF factor, sun protection factor, on many, many products across the board. And every year, well, in the last seven years, one product has failed to meet its mm. SPF claims. What, one consistent product or just one product? One product a year. A year. Right. This year, the, one of the cheapest products, the Mor Morrison one, which cost £3, came out flying colours. The, one of the most expensive ones, Avon SPF 30, did not meet in their tests the claims, and they test it rigorously mm. under laboratory conditions. On, so they actually mm. test on people's backs. But don't these products have to be tested before they go to market anyway? Yes, so they do. So how are they getting through? Well, and Avon not... claims that it is confident in its own testing, and it says um, it was conducted by external laboratories. So they stand by their claims, but which also is standing by its claims. Now, of course, the SPF factor is vital because we used to baste ourselves in olive oil and baby oil. Baby oil. Frying ourselves. Terrible. But we know better now and we're very careful about our children. In this country, sun creams are subject to the same regulations as soap and eyeshadow. Cosmetics. 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 That's all they are. In Australia and Canada, they're therapeutic goods i.e. they are doing like some good, almost. they are like drugs yeah. and medicines. So, of course, the, the regulations are much more stringent. Mm. But we don't have that. And I think now the EU laws are up for grabs, I think this is something we may well see coming through. So the kind of laws that we don't have at the moment, use by dates. In Australia, you would have an absolute use by date. We have a sort of, this is good for 12 months after you've opened it date. Mm. Now, how many of you do this? right on the lid with a pen Never. when you open Never. it so that you know oh we opened that in may it's good what we do is we go to the cupboard and we say did we get these last year or did we go away at easter can't remember well, it's yeah. when that first sunshine you know sort of like unexpected sunshine in april one mm. bank holiday weekend or something and you go scrabbling around you yeah. just find one that's from last year and use it don't you, you either take the risk or you buy again so you know, really not good for you, no. but probably good for the sun cream. So write on it, and that actually will stay. So even though you've opened it, it's good for a year? It's good for a year, but the products inside, the chemicals will degrade with the heat, with the sun. Mm. Um, so if you're carrying it to the beach every day for a two-week holiday and you've still mm. got some left, throw it away. No. It just doesn't matter. Because its efficacy is not the same. Then. No, it's not. Okay. It's a lovely word. I like efficacy. efficacy. And that just came to me. I said, like really? Like that. Is that, that the right like, word? I don't know. Does it mean like efficiency? Yes. Yes. Mm. It's a really good word. Um, so, thank you, Alice. <laughs> thank you, Ruth. Get to the top of the class, Eamon. <laughs> Wake up. Stay where you are. So, use by date is really important. Um, and also, compulsory monitoring. Once the manufacturers have made these and tested them, they don't have to retest. Whereas if it was a drug, they'd be retesting, retesting, yeah. retesting. Now, let's move on to the SPF myths, because frankly, this is like a chemical formula. It's like a maths lesson. I should be on countdown for this. Right. You're not going to ask me a maths question? I am. Oh, SPF 30, what does that mean to you? Well, you, that means quite strong, say, oh, good protection, I would think that means. 30 times longer than you would be able to without it, without burning. Yeah, there's a woman who's had a child. Mm -hmm. That's what, yes, <laughs> you have to do the maths, don't yeah. you? So if you would burn in 10 minutes in the sun conditions that you've got, and we kind of know how quickly, according to mm. our skin type, we're going to burn, 30 will let you stay out. 30 times that, so 300 minutes. So work out your 300 minutes. SPF 15, obviously half the time. But that is with reapplying it. Don't just put it on, leave it, go for a swim, rub it all off with a towel and think it's still good. And it's then that not means nothing still then. good. That means nothing, because if you have to reapply, I'm assuming you put it on once and you go off and do your business. Well, it depends what you're doing. Yeah. SPF 30, even though it says water resistant, when you go in the water, that becomes SPF 15. Yeah. It halves in it? the water. Now, I've never, yes. I didn't know that. I do understand that whole, when you come out and dry yourself, if you do dry the yourself towel, the towel, you the are worst rubbing enemy. it off, yes. Now, how much would you put on your body? On a uh, normally, uh, how much would you splurge honestly, on? Honestly, Ruth looks like a, a snowman. <laughs> really? A lot. It's frightening. It's Definitely. frightening. How much would you put? Ruth comes, ba like Ruth goes back at the end of a holiday and goes, "Why have I not got a tan?" <laughs> okay. How do you burn so easily, though. Seven of those: one for the face, one for each arm, one for each leg, one for the front, one for the back. Seven of them. Okay. So you would get through quite a few of yeah. these on your holiday. Do you think people aren't putting enough? We on, are then? definitely not putting enough on, and therefore, I mean, it's so an that awful for one lot. leg. 
yeah, yep, okay. and keep going. If you look at how much I'm doing, I mean, I only mm. sort of, you know, I'm yep. not even there yet. Gosh, we need yeah, to put an lot. awful lot on in order to get what the product says on the So one container. bottle of suntan is not going to last you two weeks on your summer it's holiday? It's really not, and it really should. And also, you know, it, it just reapply it. Otherwise, you just cannot take the risk. Can I just ask you quickly about yes. factors? Yes. So many people, including my husband, mm. who think if they've got a high factor sun protection cream, they're not going to tan. No, not, not true. Case, it? it doesn't block everything. There's still a few percent of rains that are getting through. Can I just tell you, Emily, quickly, where are you, my love? Come through. If my makeup Emily. says SPF 15 on it, yeah. only SPF 15, if you do a huge amount of... Mm -hmm. Squirt. Squirting. Mm -hmm. There is a, have a lot of foundation. That's how much you need to put on your face. Emily's going to absolutely love me for this. Would you ever put this much on your face? No. And this is how much you need to put on, what a mess, in order to get that SPF 15 protection. Oh, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So this is an added bonus. Do not put your tinted moisturiser on and think. think it is sun protection. I have it's done an, that. Thank it's you. It's not. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Um, Sorry. Please tissue look, now. <laughs> wherever you're going, hope you bear all of that uh, in mind.